Uh, welcome to Father and Son, and welcome to you, Tom, on this cold Friday morning. What do you got? Uh, great win by the Blues last week. You missed it. You watched it on the telly. I went with uh, the guest, as a guest of Eddie Maguire, and <clears throat> when he rang out on the Monday before, I said, all you want to do is gloat. That's why you're inviting me. Anyway, in the end, Kern and I had the gloat. They played really well. Yes, uh, the Carlton-Collingwood rivalry is one of the biggest in Australian sport. I mean, it's up there with the New South Wales Blues and the Queensland Maroons and, uh, you know, traditional inner-city rivals in Melbourne. It's always a big game no matter uh, who wins, but it was good to see Carlton win. Yeah, and it's, it's always interesting. The underdog wins quite often because they both teams live for this game. Indeed. Now, what's on the news front? We've got the Labor Party splitting with the Greens. It's, just... it's really quite astonishing. I mean, Labor federally only governs partly with the independents, of course, and partly with uh, Adam Bant, who is the sole Greens member of the lower house. And yet the vitriol which has been dished out by many members of the New South Wales right towards the Greens, saying that the, you know, the Greens are essentially communists and they don't stand for what Labor stands for and so forth. I, I've just been amazed. I wonder if Labor has essentially conceded it will definitely lose the election, but it needs to shore up its, its roots on the left with its working class supporter base, who in many cases are drifting towards the Greens. But it's, it's really odd. I mean, it would be like that if... The Liberals suddenly came out and just criticised the National Party for everything yeah. they stood for, yeah. and yet they're governing in a coalition together. I think they're worried that they're going to lose seats. See, this Melbourne by-election, which is on in two weeks' time, mm. and I have to vote, there's no Liberal candidate. At the moment, they say the Greens are going to win that. That's in the state lower house. So they are picking up votes from the Labor Party, the Greens, all the time. And their policies, are, they're just ridiculous. They're lunatics. There no economic policies other than what they do want to do would destroy the whole nation. So I think the Labor Party is calling it a day, and it was very sensible. That's why Ted Bailey got elected, because he didn't put the Greens in mm. preferences. I think Labor's working to the same aim, which will reduce dramatically the Greens' position if... Labor and Liberal do not give them preferences. Well, anyway. it, it, we've, we've seen political parties come and go, but I mean, the Democrats basically don't really exist anymore. There was the Democratic Labor Party, which has one member, I believe, in the uh, in the federal um, parliament. But what do you think, Dad? I mean, some people say the Greens will become the new party of the left. Others say they'll go the way of the Democrats and just implode because of their own internal contradictions. What, what do you think? I think the Labor, just what you said, I think they're one of those minority parties There'll always be green interests, but these people are on the extreme in terms of their economic policy. And it's interesting that uh, that Mundine, who's head of the Aboriginal movement, yeah, yeah. that he's actually told the Liberal Coalition and the Labor Party to get together and exclude the Greens mm. as well. And I see in the Australian this morning that um, Abbott's prepared to do that. So I think, you know, yeah, you know, what, what? I think something like Aboriginal policy, it's better to get the two major parties to try and sort something out. It's not as though we're in conflict over it. No, well, there isn't. In fact, the, the intervention in the Northern Territory, which was started by John Howe, was, was continued by Kevin Rudd, now by Julia Gillard. And what Warren Mundine wants to do is say that in uh, Northern Queensland, that Aboriginal uh, groups, tribes, etc., should have control over the natural resources to be able to exploit them for their own gain. And, of course, the Greens say, no, no, you've got to lock them up. That can't be done. Just interesting, one of the, uh, the Green senators, Lee Rhiannon, I read during the week that uh, she's very uh, evasive on this, about what she was doing in the 70s and 80s when she was a full-blown communist. But apparently in 1977, she attended uh, university in Moscow for a year uh, as, a, as a guest of the, um, of the then Russian Communist Party, the Soviet government. Mm -hmm. And when asked about this now, she doesn't really talk about it. But if you vote Green out there, do so at your peril. I mean, you've got <coughs> people amongst their ranks like Lee Rhiannon who probably were full-blown communists back in the 70s and 80s when it really meant something to be a communist. You know, my sources in the Labor Party say that if um, Gillard's uh, polls don't improve, that about six months before the next election, they will change the leader. So she, and I can't see how her polls are going to improve because the carbon tax is just, just destroying the polls for the Labor Party. And um, it's interesting, and these are very good sources, and, and the other source says, well, I said, well, they won't change to Rudd, will they? And, he's, and the man said, no, they won't. It'll be a nondescript leader, probably somebody like Crean or Smith, mm. who will lift the profile and, and at least save a lot of seats for the Labor Party. But nobody in the Labor Party now thinks they can win the next election. And because of that, neither Combay nor the um, Shorten, Shorten will stand for the leadership because... 
whichever one did, and, and if they won the, the prime ministership and then they lose the election, they'll be out on their ear and the other one will probably get in. So Combo and Shorten are the two candidates to become a leader of the opposition. But since Combo and Shorten don't want to fulfil the role that Kim Beasley did with, and Simon Crean in the past, which was just to sort of hold the fort until a more credible leadership candidate emerged. Well, no, 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 the problem is they'll go to a poll as prime minister. Yes. And then they lose it. They probably lose the leadership straight away. Yeah, possibly. Whereas they're better off to wait, see the defeat of the party, and then combine, I think, short and more fight it out for the leadership. Anyway, it's all fun and games in federal politics and state politics, as it always is, and some interesting choices for people to have there. Now, what about the economy at the moment? The uh, unemployment <coughs> data came out yesterday for uh, June. Bit. Up a bit, people seem to have reacted very negatively. I mean, to be honest, a 5.2% unemployment rate, even though the, the trend is perhaps starting to shift, yeah, you know, it is the envy of the rest of the world, certainly in the OECD. Well, it's don't still it? not good enough, I don't think. I mean, Did you know that this. Western Australia's unemployment was 3.5? Yeah, I mean, it's right. just astonishing what's going yeah. on. I was in Perth a couple of weeks ago, and the airport, you know, it's full of guys in fluorescent bare shorts, work boots and socks. You know, they're all having a few Flying, things to fly out. Well, that's what they're doing, and yeah. you know, they've got cash to splash. Um, you know, the car park is full of expensive cars. It is a different world over there. And I mean, you know, Dad, people criticise workers on the East Coast for not having the gumption to, to uproot and go over to Western Australia and take advantage of these jobs. I mean, Gina Reinhardt is having to, to import several thousand overseas workers to, to open up a new mine. I mean, do you think Australians are, are, are too wedded to where they well, live? Well, one of the problems, Tom, although their pay is much higher over there, the cost of living is frightening. It is astounding. And, and if you go to live up in the Pilbara, up in that area, you know, you're paying a thousand dollars a week mm. for a very small house. If you've got your family there, I mean, you can't. Everything's more expensive, so there's no. A lot of the gain is a bit artificial. It's all right if you've always been there and if you've got some assets, but for people to go all the way over there. And they get a long way from their friends and family. I can understand that. I think we're better off to bring the immigrants in. Certainly offer Australians the opportunity to go over there, but very few will take it. It's interesting, there's an unusual sporting connection with this. Um, ever since the Sydney Swans were set up, they've had a, a slightly higher salary cap to compensate players for the increased cost of living in Sydney. Yeah. And I understand the West Coast Eagles and uh, the Fremantle Dockers are now saying, well, you know, it's got so expensive here in WA, why can't we have the same thing? I don't think the AFL is going to bend on that, but it, it, no. I mean, it's consistent, isn't it? It is. It's made out of uh, and then I, remember, I, think, I think just on the economy, the other problem is you've got housing prices starting to drop. Yes, they were down two yeah. percent in the last quarter. Um, you know, you've got uh, retail sales are very flat. And you've got uh, Daryl Lee going into receivership. I mean, it just isn't a good e outlook here on the eastern seaboard, which you're a non-mining state. And uh, I think the uh, the Reserve Bank will have to drop interest rates next month to give a bit more stimulus to the economy. I agree. Now, finally, and quickly, when I was young, I remember that you would get a new car, drive it for a couple of years then give it to, uh, to mum, your former wife, and it would, within six months, look like a very second-hand car. You know, uh, she, she didn't look out. after it. Um, anyway, the German town of uh, Triburg, the mayor has decided to introduce women's only parking spots. They're what are they doing that for? Well, because he said, that this is the mayor, that women can't park as well as men, so the spots are bigger, they're well lit, they can be just parked into from forward, it doesn't require reverse parking. And he said, well, women are just not physically capable of driving as well, therefore we're going to give them special larger parking spots. Well, Do, does this make sense? Well, it makes sense to me. I reckon women are terrible drivers. <laughs> they're always felting cars and shopping centres. Well, that's an interesting note to stop. We hope you have a great weekend of the football. It's the Grand National Hurdle on Sunday out at Sandown. And, uh, well, we just hope by the time this goes on to the video, we'll know the fate of Carlton and North Melbourne.